All right. Yeah, I just prepared some uh, tabs here on the screen. Let's see. All right. So yeah, I've been looking into these two little Lisp dialects, which are uh, targeted to Python and then PHP. And these are quite similar projects in the sense that they both are near, uh, nearly looking pretty much like Clojure uh, and doing some special tricks to work with the language uh, that they are built on top. So for example, here's some example code. I uh, was working with Basilisp in the Blender scripting. And yeah, there is, for example, uh, Python keyword uh, args have a little bit of a special syntax. And then the, there's a similarity to the Java interoperation stuff with the dot syntax. And yeah, basically stuff like this. And then there is also this fail. I can show an example on how that looks like. There's some fail PHP, which is inter operating with the WordPress system here. So basically there is a, this sort of a syntax to call PHP functions and this sort of a interoperation, like uh, the file has its own data types and you can convert back to PHP using this sort of a function. And uh, yeah, something I've been practically doing with this, I could show this little example. I posted this in the Basilisp uh, Slack channel also. It's basically, it's a nice tool to use a closure style a script a scripting language, and it has an REPL support to connect to the Blender here, which I am showing how to import some uh, G code data into the Blender as paths, and then building an object from it. So this is a example of how to reconstruct some 3D objects from uh, G code. And uh, yeah, it's this. Uh, uh, this is sort of a toy project I have on a hackerspace, hackerspace website related project. So I can show a little view I've been working on there. So the this is like the local, or it's not the Helsinki Hack Lab, but from the town I am I'm from originally, and. Uh, I'm building a sort of a thing there that there's a 3D printer with the web UI and it posts the 3D objects from that printer. Every time someone goes to print something, it will post it with a, with a bash script onto the WordPress REST API. And then uh, the part, yeah, it, it's a bit silly, silly project, but uh, I am, uh, it is only possible to get the G code fi file from that printer and a preview image. So basically to have a 3D preview of that printed object, you need to reconstruct it from the G code, which is only coordinates of the nozzle of the device. So this is a sort of a, a funny project I've been working on. So it's a little CMS thing pushing data there. And yeah, um, so that, that was interesting, interesting to be able to do it with the Basilisp. And then I toyed with the fail and also made a demo with WordPress, of course, because uh, I have to use it. Can, and, can you say maybe? really briefly what fell is a little uh, with a bit more context thanks yeah so fell is basically i think i see it is pretty much the same as basilisp for python but it's uh, for php so it is a functional 
Lisp, which looks pretty much like closure and it compiles into PHP. So uh, you c it can compile on the fly or, or how do you call, uh, like just in time, just in time. Or, or yeah, or interpret the files on the, uh, on the fly, or then you can build, build it. And, uh, it's, it started 2020 and, uh, it is smaller than the Basilisk for what I see. And it's kind of interesting to see and look around how that has been building up. Uh, it largely leans on Symfony PHP framework parts on the website. So for example, the Symfony web frameworks router is used there. And, uh, it's interesting that they have built, uh, well, router, I think we can, yeah, we can find this. Yeah. So there's a router library, which is inspired by Reddit. So basically they have built a data, uh, focused routing system on top of this and underneath it is using the PHP symphony frameworks stuff. And yeah, it's still a sort of a early language and, but the, yeah, there's a few guys who are active on GitHub and I've been getting some response there when I've sent some issues about it. And I built this, uh, sort of, a. It's a basically a example project on how to integrate it with the WordPress. So here is just a plain WordPress site with my example running here. And, uh, I have a little, like a demo guide, how to run this yourself. If you're interested to try it, uh, it should be, should, should run pretty, pretty simply like that. And yeah, uh, it's a little bit in progress feel to this still, there's no like an repl you, there's no an repl there's like this, uh, smaller, uh, interactive language mode type of, uh, interactive thing that you can start. It's a little bit like an repl, but more generalized somehow I couldn't m make it yet to work, but basically how I worked with this was to just reload the page and print the stuff. It is, uh, more focused on the, that sort of, uh, way. And basically what this, how this plugin is set up is that there is, uh, the main, main directory has mostly boilerplate stuff. The entry point is here, which is kind of including the fail library and setting something here and then runs the, uh, main namespace and that one is the, yeah, which is ac activate activating here. So basically we are calling a WordPress dashboard setup, uh, hook to add a function there, which will add a dashboard widget here and name it, give it some description here and, uh, pass a function to that. And then the function here, it, it's, yeah, it, it looks very familiar. Uh, there's this special syntax to call methods on the PHP objects as, uh, here we are getting the current user object and then calling, calling with the, yeah, the WordPress has the, this sort of, uh, arrow syntax basically, which is with fail written like that. So yeah, there, it is a little bit like not so comfortable to have to basically use a lot of that stuff. And also with this type conversions and you have to put PSP uh, dash or slash something a lot, but then I'm quite interested to see how, uh, if that could be used as a building blocks to build the actual library on top, on top of the WordPress API. So I've been, uh, looking into the, yeah, basically the PHP interfaces 
how you can extend objects and then the list macros and these sort of things to sort of uh, learn to how to possibly build a DSL on top of this that could be usable. Because as, is, uh, as it is now, it is uh, not really necessarily, it's, it's more like adding stuff, a little bit like Babashka. If you just write a simple shell script and you add Babashka or some like uh, you use some programming language to call those shell functions, then you just add that wrapping around a few basic commands. So there's that, that kind of a thing. But yeah, this is already pretty nice. It has a hiccup style uh, templating built in. And uh, yeah, it was it was interesting to play around with this. And I see also the sort of how they are, these la different languages are progressing. The, there's some things that ma could be brought from Basilisk to the Fell, for example, that I see. And uh, it's interesting that it's kind of like a pioneering to bring that fail stuff to the WordPress currently. And it's interesting to me to have that, uh, like also in my toolkit, as I have been sort of uh, working around the WordPress, connecting to its database and APIs and pulling data into the closure data stack. So this could be just one, one extra kind of a way to get really close as I can get into the PHP process itself. So uh, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting project. And yeah, I'm also kind of uh, aiming to yeah have a tool so that I can show to my friends and tell that now you can join me in some WordPress project and you don't have to touch PHP anymore. So that's that's like a big, big, issue for many, many like more uh, quality oriented uh, programmers, I guess. So yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I can comment. Do, do you have any comments or questions? That's, that's like uh, my summer projects here. I've been messing around with and it's been, it's been fun. Really, thank you for this. Uh, we have time for brief questions. Yeah, maybe I could oh. add one. One thing uh, first, like I see that there is an issue with the debugging currently with the stuff uh, with the PHP. I have the like step debugger thing, and that's important part of the workflow. So maybe it might it might not be that necessary as I could have more of a, like a more uh, like write better code and reason better about it. But that's like a little thing that it's like. Yeah, if I use this, then I have the compilation in the PHP files, then I could step debug those. But yeah, that kind of that kind of stuff. And uh, but yeah, otherwise it might be a, a, like a, wouldn't necessarily take too long to make this usable. And it's nice to have the least macro possibilities to yeah play around with all the junky syntax on the PHP side. The Blender demo you showed was really impressive. You, how you're manipulating it? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's fun. I have the repos repository also. If you want to try try it a bit, or it's basically yeah, based definitely. on the Basilisk Blender project, and that that was really nice. I was actually building with my friend uh, something that was pretty much the same thing, but then. In one week, th this just came and it just worked and had all the end ripple like working very nicely and everything. So, yeah, it was fun to get to play around with that. But yeah, it's also like, yeah, of course, need to read quite a bit of the Blender documentation and have that sort of a mindset. I guess it's quite natural with the Java interoperation also. Also, so, but yeah, it's uh, can make nice sort of a remote controlling systems to Blender with that. Yeah, I could imagine like a processing um, for Blender and Clojure being really innovative. A processing, you mean the library or 
Yeah, the the graphical visualization library. Yeah. You could like yeah. live code that in, in Clojure and manipulate a Blender project. And that also has professional applications because it's widely used in, in the industry. So if you could manipulate Blender, you could do physics simulations and you could do post-processing, um, all yeah. sorts of things. Yeah, I'm planning to do some kind of a, like an automatic video generation and these sort of things, like kind of learning how, how the Blender could fit into that. So oh, like, a, cool. a, like it should, I, what, for what I understand, it has quite good video editing or like layering capabilities, like 2D stuff also. But yeah, those are sort of a hobby, hobby uh, side projects mostly at the moment. And maybe, by the way, I'll mention that these topics are discussed in the Zulip chat under the Blender channel, where Yarko has been sharing uh, a few of these approaches and also uh, Nikita and Thomas, uh, two other friends uh, working on a physics simulation, shared another approach with web sockets. And if anybody wishes to help with that, I think there is some good place for helping there. And yeah. Any more brief questions to Yarko? So yeah, I the, forgot the that. So, yeah, there there was also this uh, OSC protocol. I, maybe I posted a message about that in the Zulip actually, but that's that was one one thing that came to my mind. There's the OSC protocol, which is you can connect, for example, audio related stuff, and it has a sort of a it's like a UDP server. You can start on Blender side and bring data into the like a real-time data stream. So yeah, looking into those those sort of things. It's like a, a, in Ripple, you can get the remote control on programming the API, but then the, like how to get actual data streams, that's a different thing. And that's more discussed on the Zulip, Zulip side, yeah. And not to go too deep into this, but I think there's a lot of potential in commercial applications that can use that AutoCAD has a Lisp feature <clears throat> that is, you know, employs tens of thousands of people as their full-time job, um, just scripting AutoCAD with Lisp. My father worked with that, cool. so that's how I know. Yeah, so I guess Basilis is something we hope to discuss more in this group, and we care about it because of many scientific computing applications. And so hopefully, you know, if you, Yarko, have some experience reports of Basilis or anybody else, that will be really valuable for this group, I believe. And yeah, actually, I, I saw there was just someone asking about the transformers, uh, like in, importing the transformers library into it. And yeah, they on, it was on the uh, Slack Basilis channel. So yeah, the, it's a, like a uh, really good, good to just try out how things work with it. The developer is really like a uh, response there, so I can recommend. Yeah. 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 And uh, so if you wish to share this link, that would be really helpful. And uh, uh, thank you, Tim, for the links you're sharing. So Tim mentioned Highland, which is a, another flavor of closure like language, maybe not as Basilic, but uh, very, you know, with a, actually a large group of people behind it, a, cl a closure like language interpreted in Python, and there is also PISC yeah. and so on. And if I understand correctly, Basilisk is really trying to be closure, more or less. Is that yeah, right? yeah. The high lang used to be more like it, but it kind of drifted more on its own way. Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah, wonderful.